Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today we're going to be looking at all things run and gun. As while we did get games like Super Contra, they weren't as fondly remembered as on other platforms. So let's check out Amiga First or exclusive games as we look at the Amiga's answer to Contra. First we have Jim Power in the Mutant Planet. It was developed by Digital Concept and published by Lorisel in 1992. We start off with possibly the most Amiga looking game on the list. There's lots of parallax scrolling going on and we have so much colour on screen at once. And let's not forget the music. So we are Jim Power and we've been sent to the mutant planet to save the president's daughter. But that is really just an excuse to run around a level and shoot at everything. Which is what you want in a running gun game really. But this one sort of breaks the name, as you can't move and shoot at the same time. So it's a run stop shoot run stop shoot type of game. This is mostly down to the controls, as while you shoot your regular gun with just a tap of the fire button, if you hold it down, you'll trigger the special bomb. But what this does share with all the other action platformers is that you can upgrade your main weapon, and you'll find a few power-ups in the first level, so you can get a double shot or a stronger one. There are lots of platforms, secrets and traps for you to work around, and after taking down some mini bosses, the game will throw a curveball at you with the end of level boss, as now you're flying around on a jetpack, and you have to take him down in the air. And this continues to the next level. And from here on in, the game will alternate between being on foot and being in the air. It's a fun game, but it is one that will really test you, as it has that one hit in your dead mechanic. That and also having to collect every single key that you see, even the ones that are quite difficult to get, as you'll have lots of doors that you'll need to open up. So you will have a bit of a challenge on your hands. Roll up, roll up, because next we have The Killing Game Show. Which was made by Raising Hell, with Psygnosis handling the publishing in 1990. Who obviously had to add a very fancy intro. That does make us look like an ED-209 with tusks. But that really isn't as important as the gameplay. That has us playing as that robot from the intro, which really do look identical, but he does have a bit of a weird walk on him. There are a few things to note from the very start. There is that very fancy looking water, which turns out is an instant death, but it's also not static, as after a few seconds it will start to move up the screen, and thus forcing us to keep moving upwards which is mostly the direction you want to go, as the goal is to head off the very top of the map. This will require shooting at everything you see, or at least trying to avoid it, and if you do manage to take out a whole wave, then a little heart will come out that will give you more health. And is it just me, or did Zool nick that sprite? Your walker gets to store one weapon and one tool which are found in what looks like these piles of rocks. And the thing to note about the weapon is that outside of your original gun, all the rest that you pick up will have limited ammo. So there will be times when you'll see an identical version of what you've got, but it could be useful to switch out if you're already running quite low. 
and when you need to use a tool, then you just gotta hold down the fire button. This is also how you use keys. But do be careful as there are some red herrings and some pickups that will automatically drop whatever you're currently holding. Thankfully, you can move while firing, so it is actually a run and trot type of game. And you might have noticed the party piece of this game already, as I've had to do it a few times, and that is the ability to walk up walls, which is really quite cool. And you can pretty much grab any vertical surface that you see. And this is obviously how you get off the top of the map as well. Now, outside of having to find keys on the later levels, possibly the most interesting thing to say about this game is the replay system. As when you die, it will replay your actions when you respawn. And then you can watch it replay it to the right point, and then you can hit the fire button and take control. Or if it takes a bit too long to get there, you can hold down the F key to fast forward. It's an interesting game, and that replay system is really quite cool. But the levels do feel a little bit samey as you go along. The next game is Arony. And it was developed by Realms of Fantasy in 1992, with Zeppelin handling the publishing. You really don't need to think too hard of how they came up with the reason for its name, as this is a very action filled game. You start your first mission by running around a desert like level, and straight away you can see that this is a very basic game. It's a simple run left to right, shooting at anything that comes onto the screen, all while avoiding anything that you can't take down, as even the slightest touch with a baddie will drain your health. They do allow you to go up and down ladders, and you can even jump up to some areas, but you've got to be very careful with coming back down, as falls are incredibly deadly in this game. Smaller ones will hurt you, Larger ones will outright kill you. What are just as deadly are the mortar launchers, as these will take a lot of your health. But they can be removed if you get into the right position, and these are one of the few baddie types that will not respawn when you die. Some of the others include these security domes, or even these rocket launchers. you'll start off with two weapons, one that will have unlimited ammo and the other not so much, but you can restock with boxes that you'll find sat around. You might even find new weapons in some of those boxes as well, but they are a bit few and far between. And for the most part it's just more regular weapons, they'll just do a little bit more damage or just be a little bit quicker. It's not until much later in the game that you get anything really that interesting. But that is if you'll make it that far, as the levels are extremely long, and the checkpoints, which are these walkie talkies, are quite spaced out as well, so it will take a lot of work to get there. They didn't expect you to complete this game on your first attempt, that's for sure. On top of all this, the mission objectives can be quite different for each level, as some cases it might just be make it to the end where others will require you to take out a set of machines, or pick something up. Overall, it does feel a little bit of a throwback game design wise, but it is still quite fun. We are plumbing the depths next as we check out Deep Core. Made by Dynafield and published by ICE, this was released in 1993. The intro explains how some alien crashed to Earth and took over a research base on the ocean floor, and it's our job as Captain Dawnraiser to head down there and work out what's going on. 
and this will require us to hunt for keys. Oh, so many keys. As well as shoot lots of things, obviously. This seems to be another muscle-bound hero that has great issues with aiming any other direction than right in front of him. Maybe his muscles are too big to be able to point his arm up or down. So you gotta get used to jumping and ducking if you want to try and hit some of the other enemies. As you will have to take on a bunch of weird and wonderful creatures that inhabit this underwater base. This is also the first game that we've seen to get a CD32 edition. But they really didn't make much use of the hardware. It got an updated title screen and they removed the password system. So it's really not the one to go for if you're going to play it. There are three huge maps for you to play in this game. And each of them is split into three pretty large sections as well. So you will have quite the maze for you to navigate. As you'll have to use these doors to get around. Some might take you to another room but others might move you up or down the current room. And you also might find a few dead ends. These might lead you to some nice upgrades, but it might also lead you just to some baddies. You'll have to go there to find out. Thankfully, there are a range of guns that can be upgraded, but you will have to pay very close attention, as these are all provided via icons. If you collect multiple of the same one, you'll upgrade your weapon, but if you pick up a different one, then you'll switch to it. And every time you switch, you'll be reduced to the starting version of that weapon. And there's also a few weapons that I feel are a little... useless. Like this grenade launcher, it's just not fun to use. And on the subject of icons, there are some that will give you more health as well as more air as you'll have to keep both of those balanced if you're going to get anywhere in this game. Air will just naturally reduce as you go along, and you'll get it back through the tokens that baddies will drop, where health is obviously reduced when you get hit. But as I mentioned before about paying attention, you'll have to do that with these icons as well, as some of them won't give you more health, it'll take it away. This is definitely an interesting game, and I think the key mechanic does get a little bit annoying. But the levels are quite cool. There's lots of things that you'll have to deal with, which makes it quite interesting. We come up for air as we check out Land of Genesis. Which was developed by Maurizio Gamelli. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And it was published by Clearwater in 2001, making this by far the newest game on the list. And it's the only game that requires an AGA machine. But if you want all the bells and whistles, then you're gonna need an even beefier machine as it can support up to a 68040 CPU and 8 megabytes of fast RAM. And the results of all this is a very nice looking game. And it's one that the graphics are definitely the most technically advanced in this video. But not gameplay wise though, as it sticks with a more classical gameplay. It's running, shooting, and well, that's pretty much it. And when not running and shooting, you're gonna need to be jumping and shooting as there are targets that are on the roofs that you have to take down. The only real goal of the level is to explore it and try and find the keys. That will open up a new area that you can then run around and find more keys that will open up an area and etc etc. Thankfully there are lots of baddies to keep you on your toes. And it feels a bit of a shame to take some of them out because it looks like they're just happily grooving on the spot. But seeing a bunch of enemies is usually a good hint that you've not been to this area. Because these levels are a bit of a maze. But they don't use respawning baddies. So you can use that to work out if you've been here before or not. And after a bit of exploring you'll find some upgrades which are randomised. So you might get something that will give you a spread shot. 
or it might give you a completely different weapon. But you can switch between them at any point. You do this by using the arrow keys, which will cycle through what you have, and you can see this on the HUD, and then you can just hit return to select it. Now these weapons do have multiple states, and to be honest, on the first level, getting the upgrade to your basic pea shooter might be one of the better options, as there's way too many of those ceiling mounted launchers, which can shoot at you from around walls, which is something that you obviously can't do. So you'll have to get used to trying to avoid them, or you can use your special attack, which can reach them. Just hit the space bar and out come these balls of death. They might not always hit the target, but if you use enough of them, you can clear them out with no real problem. And thankfully, you do get quite a lot of them as well. And after a quick end of level boss, we find ourselves at a shop where we can spend some of that hard earned cash. That seem to be those little tokens that some of the baddies dropped. Now there are a few things that we can buy here, including weapon upgrades, personal upgrades, as well as just general weapons and health. And after that we find this game follows Jim Powers more than any other that we've seen, because we get a shoot em up level, in a proper ship as well. And you can select between several different weapons in this level, even if some of them do sound a little bit weedy. I think the sound isn't the best part of this game. This shoot em up level is fun enough, there's a lot of effects going on, it's all really fancy, but the way it handles you interacting with the walls could do with some tweaks. Because you're allowed to move into them, which means you'll take some damage, be invincible for a little while, take some more damage, it's a little bit annoying, because it's not always obvious when you're colliding. But that's really my only proper gripe with it. So while this might not be a groundbreaking game, it is a lot of fun, particularly as it was made by a first time studio. And after all this change of scenery, it seems we picked up the plague. Which was created by Critical and published by Enterprise in 1990. The manual goes on for several pages talking about how an experiment goes wrong and thus unleashes the plague that mutates all the creatures around. But really, it's just an excuse for us to shoot a lot of weird looking creatures. Using our unnamed hero, that looks a little bit like He-Man, if you gave him a gun, the game seems to be quite inspired by shoot 'em ups as you have your regular gun that you can fire by just tapping the fire button, but you can also charge it up, and that will unleash a larger shot that will go through baddies, who appear in waves that also feels very shooter-like. But I find it a bit odd in a game that talks about having to take out everything, there's quite a lot of baddies that you have to avoid. But I guess it means you can't just keep running forward, you have to plan your movement if you want to get by without taking too many hits. And you also have to be careful as some of the screens might have quite a lot of baddies constantly coming onto it, so you can't stay still either. Now thankfully you can take a few hits which is indicated on the HUD. Not on either of those bars, that would be too helpful, but no, it's the number next to the letter P, which is right next to another number which is your lives next to the L, so it can get a little bit confusing. Because those bars, well, they tell you if you've charged your gun up to full, which isn't really needed as your sprite changes when that's the case, and the second one is the amount of ammo you have for one of your other weapons. Now these tend to be a bit few and far between, and will typically show up when there's a difficult section, so don't expect to be holding on to them for too long. But they are quite cool though. 
What is also quite nice is the special attack, and these are great for hitting those bosses multiple times. And yes, you will be facing a number of pattern based bosses. And if you feel your jump is a little bit weedy, as you try to get over some gaps and he falls just short, then it turns out you have a super jump, but you can only use it to get up to some platforms, and this is done via a fire button and up combo. But you have to be careful as down and fire will take you down a platform as well, which can be deadly if there's a pit below you. Overall I think this is a fun title, and it has some nice graphical touches. There's some nice lightning going on in the second level, and it also has just about the right amount of shoot 'em up influences, so it is a nice little game. And finally, we have Rough and Tumble. Developed by Wonderkind and published by Renegade, this was released in 1994. You play as Rough Rogers, and you're an 8 year old who's trying to get his marbles back from an army of tin head robots. Now, amazingly, there's a page and a half of story that goes with this game. But that's pretty much all you'll care about, because once you start playing this game, it just not required, because this is absolutely amazing. You'll start off with your default machine gun, but that's enough to take down most of the tin heads after a few hits. But being a run and gun game, that's just the start of it, as littered around the levels are lots of ammo or time limited upgrades. These include turbocharging your basic gun, getting rockets or lasers, as well as a few other fun ones. The action is fast and frantic as these walking robots will spawn from the teleporters, but luckily there is just a limited number that will spawn, so you'll have to be on the lookout for when they turn off. But it's really the bees and the flying creatures that are the ones that you really have to keep your eye out for, because they'll come on quickly from off the screen to attack and they tend to try and position themselves to be a real pain to try and take down quickly. The levels will start off quite small, but then grow in size and complexity as you go, with lots of hidden places for you to find, typically with upgrades, and you'll also need to explore the whole level to get those marbles, as they are hidden everywhere. So you're going to be going down into those darkened caves. I just love the pallet effect that happens when you go into them. And usually to get yourself out, you'll have to launch yourself up into the air with the springs and the other mechanical devices. Even on the first world, you'll have to deal with quite the range of baddies, as well as having to deal with a number of light key puzzles. Now there's three colours of marbles for you to find, and typically there'll be more than what's required in the level, that when you finish collecting them, any leftovers will change to other points icons. The HUD also shows how much ammo you have for your current gun, as well as the number of lives, but also how many hearts you have, as you can take a number of hits. Now you start off with just three, but you can grow this by picking up upgrades. But these are lost when you die, so death has a real penalty here. With four worlds each with their own look, it's quite a large game. And talking of large, bosses are also quite big as well. And amazingly, all of this is running on the original Amiga, so all you need is just one megabyte of RAM. This is a personal favourite of mine ever since I played the demo, and it's become one of my holy grail games, as I really want to get a copy for my collection. And to round out the video, I've got a bit of a bonus for you. It's a PD game, The Biker Babe from Barbados. It's short, it's silly, and it doesn't look all that great. But it is fine enough. The goal is simple, head to the exit on the right. 
and to get there you'll need to use your shotgun to hit lots of weird looking baddies. But take note, you can't just keep blasting. After each go on the shotgun, you'll have to tap the fire button again to reload. The levels themselves aren't really all that varied. Yeah, the graphics change, but the layouts, well, there's not really much in the way of layouts, is there? As I said, it's silly, short, but there is some fun to be had. And with that, we've come to the end of the episode. And as always, I know that there will be games that I missed. Some, most likely, are very obvious. And I'll kick myself when I get told that I missed it. So if you want to let me know what I did miss, then you can tell me down in the comments. So until next time, I was the Gouldfish, that was quite the run of games, and this was Gouldfish on Games. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then lucky for you, as I've done a few of these videos already. Or there's some buttons down below there that you might want to run and gun, as that will tell YouTube that you really did enjoy it. Or if you'd like to chat some more, then you can always join the Discord. There'll be links for you to follow down below.